Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at data manipulation instructions. In this video, we're going to look at a class of instructions that are called test instructions. And <clears throat> what a test instruction is, is when you have a value somewhere, whether it's in a register or in a memory location, and you want to know something about it, whether it be, is that number negative? Is that number a zero? Is, is bit seven a one? Is bit six a zero? You want to figure out something about the information, but you don't want to alter it. Okay, so we kind of looked at how you could determine whether bits within a, uh, a field or a destination were ones or zeros by anding them with a mask and then looking at the zero flag. And that, was, that works, that absolutely works. The only issue is that once you do that, you destroy the value that's held in the destination because you had to and it with something. And so it's very common to want to know information about values, but we don't want to, we want to preserve their value. Okay, so that's what a test instruction is. Okay, and I, I use use test, that's, that's kind of my term. There is a test instruction specifically, but uh, I group these instructions into this category called test instructions, and there's three of them that we can potentially use with the MSP430. The first one is gonna be called bit, okay? So it's, it's actually called bit test. The mnemonic is BIT, and it performs an AND with the destination exactly like we did before with the AND operation. The only difference is that it doesn't alter the destination. So it's exactly what we did before with ANTS. We can use it to determine whether a bit is a one or a zero, because if you look at the mask, anytime you have a one in there, what you're gonna do is you're trying to check whether or not that value is a one. So if you have a mask that has all zeros and then one one in there, the zero is, all the zeros are gonna clear out the value as a result of the AND operation. And the only AND operation that matters is gonna be the location in the mask that has a one in it. So if the corresponding bit in the destination has a one, the result of the AND will be a one and the ultimate operation or the ultimate result will not be zero. So you can test if a bit is a one by checking the zero flag and saying, oh, Z was not equal to zero. That meant that the, the anding with a one resulted in a one, and you just learned about the particular bit. In a similar fashion, if the and operation with the mask that had a one in it resulted in a word that is all zeros, that means that the destination lo bit location was a zero. And you can look at the Z flag and say, hey, Z is equal to one, my result of this AND operation with the mask was a zero. I now know what the value of that bit was within the destination. And the great thing is the bit operation will not destroy the contents of the destination. It just sets the flag. It just sets the Z flag or sets them all, but we care about the Z. Another one that is provided with the MSP430 is called a compare instruction. And the mnemonic is CMP. And what this one does is it subtracts the source from the destination. And so it's, it's very similar to a sub instruction, <clears throat> but it doesn't alter the destination. And you say, why in the world would you want to subtract the source from the destination? Well, you can figure out if the destination is a specific value, because if you wanted to see, hey, is, I wonder if the destination is FFEE, one way to do that is to subtract FFEE -E from it. And if the result was zero, that meant, hey, that destination was FFEE. -E. And you would know the exact value of it. If it was not, that means, so if it was any other value, the result would not be zero. And you would know that it is not the value that you were checking against. And so once again, this doesn't alter the destination, but it does update the flags. And then what you do is you use the zero flag for this one, and that's how you check to see if, it's, if the destination was a specific value. The third test instruction is actually called test. And what this one does is it just flat out subtracts zero from the destination, and it updates the status flags. And the, the key ones on here that you get to 
the, the, the status flags that you care about on this one are going to be negative and zero. Because if you subtract zero from it, <clears throat> if the value had been zero in the destination, the Z flag would be asserted. If the value had been negative, the N flag would be asserted. So you can see if a value is zero or negative. So they're, they're pretty simple, but they're very powerful. But the key differentiation amongst these and logic operations is that you don't alter the destination. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do a quick one. Uh, fire up CCS. I got my MSP430 plugged in. And I want to do a little example here where, let's see, what do I want to do? Let's, let's do an example of all three of them. So here we go. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go file new, <laughs> file new CCS project. And I'm going to, I got my MCU correct. I'm gonna, let's call this uh, ASM underscore ALU because it's data manipulation. We'll just call it tests. Okay. And make sure it's assembly only. Fires it up. And here's my main program. And we'll go in here. Let's get a main looper going. So main address label and then a jump main. And then let's do this. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, let's uh, let's initialize a register like R4 and then do a, uh, we'll do a bit test on it, okay? So let's, let's initialize R4 to the following value, 0001000. Okay, so this is the same example that we used with the AND operation. Uh, we'll pop it into R4. And I want to know, the question, first question I want to ask is, is bit 7 equal to a 1 or is bit 7 equal to a 0? So if I look at this, this little test example is going to be, the answer is no, bit 7 is not a 1. So I want to know that. <laughs> so let's do this. I am simply going to do bit dot b and I give it a mask. And the mask is almost always immediate addressing. You provide it as immediate addressing. So I'm going to do 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, b, and then R4. And what I'm going to do is look at the Z flag. So if bit 7 was a 1, what will happen is that the result of the AND would result in 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that value is not equal to 0. So the Z flag would not be asserted. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so it would not be asserted. No, it's not. Okay, now let's, while we have it, let's do bit B and let's ask the second question of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, B. And we'll go ahead and ask the next question of, is bit 4 a 1? And in this situation, the answer will be yes, and Z will, e will be equal to, the, the AND operation will result in all zeros and the Z flag will be asserted. Okay, all right, all right. Or excuse me, the Z flag will not be asserted because the result was was not zero because the result would be zero 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 one zero 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 zero. Okay, so just to keep that straight, I'm kind of babbling here. The result of this is going to be equal to zero 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 zero. When I and these together, you will have these these two fields right here. The result of the and will be zero 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 all zeros, and that means. Z is equal to one, it is asserted. The result of this operation will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and that means Z flag will not be asserted. So that's what the bit instruction will do, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and fire it up. And we'll see what happens. Now remember, we're not gonna alter the destination, so that's the nice part of this, uh, this instruction. Okay, and boom, we care about R4, so let's get R4 on the screen here. We got R4, we want to make it so we can see all the bits, the lower bits are the most important. So let's do this, we got that. As always, come down here, set a breakpoint, run to it, and then let's do our first instructions, which is going to make R4 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So there it is right there. And now what I'm going to do is I want to be able to see the Z flag. Okay, so I'm going to come up here, and I, here's the Z flag right here. When I perform this AND, I should see two things. I should see the Z flag be asserted, because the result of the AND between this mask and this destination uh, is going to result in zero. So the Z flag is going to be asserted. But more importantly, well, equally important, 
is that R4 doesn't get altered. So here we go. You ready? Here, I'm going to go step. Boom. <laughs> Look at R4 didn't get changed and Z was asserted. I now know that bit seven of this particular value was not a zero. Okay. Now let's do the next one. The next question is, is bit four a one or a zero? And when I do this operation, it is going to result in this result. Okay, when I end this value with this value, the result is going to be that. And it's and I cleared all the other bits out. So now I know that if this is not zero, that means that that bit had to be a one in the original destination. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to go go. It did not alter R4 and N or excuse me, Z was equal to zero. So this worked. This is great. Okay. That's cool. Now let's do this. Let's do some, uh, let's do another example where we're going to do a test instruction. So let's move something into R5. Let's go pound 99 and then uh, R5. And so we're going to do a, not a test instruction, a compare instruction. So remember a compare instruction is going to subtract something from the destination, your, your value, and it's going to tell you whether the Z flag was zero or not. And it's going to say, is it equal to that value? Okay, so here's how this works. I'm going to go comp.b, so compare.b, and pound 99 R5. So let's think about what I'm doing. R5 has 99 in it. And I'm going to, and I, let's say that I didn't know that, but I can use this instruction to say, hey, I want to see, I want to check if this R5 is holding 99 or not. If it is, it will perform a subtraction It'll take the source or destination minus the source. And if they're equal, you will get Z is equal to one because they matched, they subtracted, and the result was zero. So Z will be asserted. The great part is R5 is not destroyed. To show the kind of dual of that is let's compare it to something that's not the same value, which would be, let's choose 77. In that situation, it's going to take 99 minus 77. The result's whatever, 22. That's not equal to zero. So I can look at... at uh, the Z flag and see, I can tell that it was not equal to that. So this is a great one to test whether or not something is a specific value, okay? All right, so I fire that up. Uh, I'm gonna come down here. Let's go ahead and move our breakpoint down to our compare instructions. I'll run to it. And I wanna see the Z flag again, but I wanna see R5. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a step. R5 is now loaded with 99. And since we're using uh, decimal, let's put it over into here into decimal. I got 99 in there, and I am going to subtract 99 from it using this compare instruction, but not alter R5. I will only alter the, the Z flag or the status flags. So watch what happens. I run it. Z was asserted. That means that R5 was holding 99. R5 was not altered because this is a compare instruction. So I, I was I notified by the Z flag that, hey, R5 is holding 99. Now let's check if R5 is holding 77. So I'm going to do a compare against 77 and see what happens to the Z flag. Lo and behold, it's not asserted. That means the question is no. The answer to the question was no. R5 is not holding 90, or excuse me, R5 is not holding 77. So that's a compare instruction. <clears throat> okay. The last one we have here is going to be the test instruction. And let's do this. So let's go move.b. Let's do like a negative, negative 99. Okay. And let's put that in R6. And then I'm just going to do test B R6. What that does is it is going to go out and it is going to sub it's going to subtract zero from R6. And it does that solely to update the status flags. And the status flags that are really interesting are the Z flag and the N flag. So in this situation, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to run to my test, run to my point, and I'd like to get N and Z on here. And so here is our, here's our six, and it's going to, let's go ahead and load it up with its test value. So it's a negative number, negative 99. So that's the choose complement code of negative 99 decimal. And I'm going to look at N and Z and figure out information about this. So I'm going to subtract zero from this, and let's go ahead and do it and see what happens. Two things happen. First and foremost, this number that's in R6, I now know that it is a negative number. That's interesting to know. 
Also, I know that it was not equal to zero. It is a number that is anything but zero. Okay, all right, so that's it. Those are the three what I call test instructions. And again, they're used to just find out information about a field without destroying its value. Okay, that's it. Nice work. Remember to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all the latest videos and see ya.